I want to ask you something though. You know, Lincoln. I, I want to ask you something. Tired of all the ass kicking, okay? And so I fell asleep. And woke up and said, "Where's the wings?" <laughs> The wings, the wings did it. Oh man! But see, Lincoln, I want to actually ask you a couple questions and stuff because yes, sir. you know the, when, when we hear like you're just saying you heard 175 million dollars, you know that was Chris Sims, and we, we got so many guys out there that uh, that are trying to get you know get some space out in the blogosphere right now and sometimes they exaggerate the truth now we've all heard that Dak Prescott was looking for a four-year deal at 35 million which comes out to 140 million so it's not a hard stretch to say if the Cowboys want five that it would be a hundred and uh, 70 million so that's how they got to that number but the Cowboys and Dak's agent are both saying no nah, we didn't turn down 175 million but I'm going to ask you, though, as a football player, when somebody got paid on the team, did you look at that and say, I can't believe that SOB got paid and anything like that? You, 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 what, what was the attitude? That's what he deserved. That's right. So, so you sit back and you start counting somebody else's money, mm -hmm. then you lost, you, you lost focus. Right. Oh, hey, yeah, you're, you're paying for dinner tonight, bro. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's how now, it works, man. You now, don't, some, you some, don't count somebody else's money like that. There you go. Something you said in there actually really took me back to when I was a kid watching football. But you were talking about being part of the team and how you felt that even though you were a rookie, that um, you felt like this was your team and the place that you wanted to be. A lot of times I feel like guys are into it in the money, and I always hear them say, you know, I'm here to help this team. And it's like, you know, it's not really part of their blood that, you know, it didn't matter if it's the Cowboys, the Redskins. It's just like it's the bottom line is the money. Do you feel like that's changed from when you were playing to today? Oh, definitely. But here, here's the problem. I, let me go specific with the Cowboys. Here's one of the problems, major problem for me. Mm -hmm. When I played, everybody on the team were Cowboy fans. as kids or their parents were a Cowboy uh -huh. fan or a cousin or somebody in in their life, love the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. You don't have that today. We don't have a lot of Cowboy fans playing on that 53-man roster. Mm -hmm. When you have a love for a team and now you finally grow up and you become a player for that team, right. you give them a little extra. And I say this all the time, I know some people think I'm a jerk. There's no other team out there like the Cowboys. Okay? We did this thing. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, um, we made the NFL what the NFL is. Mm -hmm. Jack Jones taught all these, you know, small market teams how to make money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's who we are. And it's just got to be another level of love and respect for the game, number one. And um, our guys are going to have to, we got to do something a little extra because every time we play someone, they give us a little something extra because they're yeah. on TV. Right. Only because of the Cowboys. Yeah. And so they come to Amen. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hit, though. You know, so there's is is a little more respect, a little more love for the game, and just go out there and, and make it happen. I think the right move was getting Andy Dolph. Mm -hmm. I'm not losing my mind about that. I'm really not. I'm okay. not I'm not gonna sweat one guy on this team when you got an offensive line, you got a running back who is an old school dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He reminds everybody somebody, oh, you shouldn't have paid him. You out of your dang mind. If you <laughs> watch his plays last year when he didn't have the ball, he was looking for people to hit in the face. True. That's what you want. He doesn't avoid contact. We need to come up with a better way. And so I think Andy Dalton, if Dak is, you know, I'm not losing my mind about it. Yeah, I'm not gonna sweat whether or not he shows up or not. But we have a quarterback just in case, and we have a dog at running back. We have fantastic receivers. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is go out there and play football. Amen on that one. So as we dissect the body, the 8-8 eight and eight season, when we looked at it and we said we actually had some really good parts, where do you think the Cowboys went wrong last year? Where do you think the season went awry? Do you look at the defense? Do you look at special teams? Do you look at coaching? Do you look at motivation? Defense fell off. Defense fell off. We mm -hmm. couldn't, you know, uh, everybody was – upset with Garrett for this, you know, try to run and, and, get, and get the offense was erratic. Okay, even though he put up all of these, you know, body numbers, you know, but they weren't consistent. 
but the defense fell off, man, in in in, in bad situations. You know, important situations where they mm-hmm. should have stepped up. They didn't. Didn't didn't get that ball taken away. This led to a you know a BS season. You know, but I think I really think it was a great move to bring in Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. It's the first time ever they had a competent backup backup at quarterback. You know what I mean? I always mm-hmm. bring these people. I'm going, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's going on? But, what do you see in him to yeah. give him some money? You it's, know what I mean? Especially so, for the price that they got him for, because you're only talking about nine hundred thousand dollars more than Cooper Rush. Because I, I had no faith if, if that went down. I didn't have any faith in Cooper Rush being able to lead us there. So that is a comfort Cooper level. Rush. Yeah, definitely. You know I mean? Cooper Rush. Yeah. Okay. Love him. Great guy. But Andy Dalton is looking to be somewhere or mm-hmm. look to be the Cowboys quarterback. So his whole the Ryan Tannehill. reality is to ball out. Mm-hmm. And he finally has an offensive line. He finally has a, you know, um, a running back. Mm-hmm. It, receivers galore. Right. I mean, we're filthy with, with, with how much we have here in Dallas. So mm-hmm. we're just going to take a, we're going to take a guy that's, you know, ready to, to do something, you know, be somebody. Amen. So Lincoln, this, this is what I, I, I dreamed of being a Dallas Cowboy player myself. Of course, I never got to that kind of level like you did and stuff. But tell me, what was it like for that very first time that you were actually stepping out on the field to actually play a game as a Dallas Cowboy? You know, did you have butterflies? Were you nervous? Were you ready to throw up? Or were you excited? What, what was that feeling like? I'm going to tell you my first practice and then my first game. My okay. First All right. That'll work. All right, check this out. So, I'm I, I, I just finished um, arena ball season. Uh-huh. Okay, I got an agent. Cowboys are calling, and my agent comes back. He says, "Hey man, I want you to stick with me, man." But I, I but the Miami Dolphins called. They they want to sign you as soon as you get off the plane. I, mm-hmm. said, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm for the Cowboys, he said, "Well, the Cowboys know that you were injured. They want to work you out." He said, but I'm going to work a deal out. I said, all right. So okay. he calls Dallas and says, you know what? We're going to go with the office from the Dolphins because they're going to go ahead and sign him. They said, bring him on down. Put him on the plane. We'll sign him right now. Mm-hmm. So I get down there, show up. You know, I'm like, oh, man, this is awesome. And so they sign me. I sign my little, you know, contract. They send me to the locker room, and they're rushing me to get dressed. I said, okay, all right. Nobody's in the locker room. I come out on the field. For practice mm-hmm. in all hell hot. And Jimmy meets me at the gate. Uh oh. He says, Hey, I like the way you work that deal out, man. <laughs> you got 10 plays to make this team. <laughs> 10 plays? <laughs> the number what? one defense in the NFL. <laughs> Just won a Super Bowl. And I got middle drill, which is offensive lineman, defensive lineman, mm-hmm. linebackers, me. Jimmy stands behind me. He's pointing to me that I'm getting the ball because I got moose. You never know. Mm-hmm. I might slip one to moose, but I doubt it. You know what I mean? It's only on certain situations. And he points to the hole I'm going to. And everybody's meeting me in the hole, and I'm running over <laughs> everybody because I was 260 pounds, and I wanted Woo. to get out. And so after seven plays, Jimmy said, you, you're you here for training camp. Wow. Okay? Now, my first game, the week before, it was the Atlanta game. We're down in Atlanta. Emmett bruises his thigh. Mm-hmm. I never touched the field. Derek showed up. Okay? But I was on the sideline. Yeah. I made the trip. The next week is Thanksgiving Day in the snow. We did. We woke up that morning. All of a sudden, there's ice. You know what I mean? And it's all over the field. And so we get in the game. Emmett's still kind of hobbling. Uh, forgot the running back for Miami, big fella, By, Biner, By, Ernest, Keith, Biner? Ernest Biner. Mm-hmm. I believe it was Ernest Biner. Well, either way it go. And so he's a big fella. He's scooting all around the field. So Jimmy looks at me and says, let's go. So my first experience, <laughs> Thanksgiving Day, the whole world is watching this game. Everybody's Ooh. watching the Cowboys. Uh-huh. And my first play went for like 16 yards. I was nervous. I got up. I was all hyped, and I just dropped the ball. And that, you know what I mean. I didn't. I didn't know where I was for the first series. I didn't. Know, I. I wasn't actually on the field mentally, just uh-huh. physically. 
and I couldn't believe this stuff was happening. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just following the game plan. This is what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You got to hit the hole, and then you look. And so, um, Lewis Oliver. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember him. Safety from Miami. Mm-hmm. 224. Couldn't cover a lick. All he wanted to do was come up and hit running backs. And so I hit the hole. I just I seen him at the last minute. He knows how to hit those run angles. Right. Seen him at the last second, dug my shoulder. Um, um, he went down. I kept going a little bit. I get up, left side, done, numb. So I get back to the huddle, and Aikman goes, let's run that play again. <laughs> 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 well, close the whistle. Lewis Oliver was down. I uh, knocked him out. He went unconscious. And uh-huh. He never played again after that game. Whoa, man. that play! That play! I was looking at Aiden like, man, you give me the ball, it's gonna get ugly. <laughs> I, I, re- I, rem- I remember <laughs> that game quick. too. I remember because that that was the Leon, Leon, Leon last. Yes. yes. Oh man. They had yes. the trick over there for me and Kevin because Kevin had a couple of touchdowns and I'm a Dallas boy. I had all the yards. I'm like looking at this turkey. As soon as that happened, man, they went across that ice like they won't skate. Oh man. <sighs> so I know you were mad at the big cat that you you cost me my turkey. <laughs> tell you something. People ask me that. Reporters, all of it. Here's what I tell them all the time. He was six seven. <laughs> His mm-hmm. arms touched the ground. Mm-hmm. His knuckles. Damn. And he was country strong. So no, I just said, hey man, it's all it's right. All, it's all good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Listen, I ain't crazy. I ain't but but in the back of your mind, people. it's like that was my damn Thank turkey, you. man. <laughs> Man, I, I can man, I, I can go through stories with you forever, man. I just this is like to have a big pile of chicken wings there, a nice uh, twelve pack of you beer. You killing me, man? I need some wings right now. Okay, well, I, I know where we can get some. <laughs> C- come October in DC, you we're gonna be ready for that. Well, are we gonna be ready for that one there? Oh, Barry? Man, it was going down, baby. Barry, I know we're going to be ready for that because uh, – An encore. We got the encore scale October 25th, Mark. Oh, and man. You know, uh, two weeks after Oregon. my birthday. Yeah, because we definitely got to go. You yeah, know, that stadium's not a great place, but they, I tell you, you know, what. they're talking about even if they let people in the stadium, it might be 15,000, whatever. We in the parking lot, baby. Oh, you know, we had that 65-inch TV out there, man. We were good to go out there. We, yeah. we had the DJ. We had the TV. We had the food. We had the crowd. Man, we you know, and it's not like, hold on. Let, let's back this up now. It was plenty of people still it, in the It's parking not like FedEx Field. It's not like FedEx Field is like, you know, the Palace in Dallas. That place is a dump. It was better in the parking lot than in the stadium. I ain't going to lie to you. Hey, like, right. we, like we said, right. this, is, this is a time to pivot. So we're going to make it bigger and better. And, uh, you know, we'll improvise and, and do some great stuff. Right, Mark? That's I mean, right. Yeah, we can definitely socially we distance out in the parking lot out there. But, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this has been been incredible here to be here with Lincoln and you guys and stuff and thinking about it. Cause see, that's one of the things I definitely miss was actually you, you think about that tailgate, all the fans and stuff there together. You know, seeing the Redskins fans mad and crying after the game. That's what what football's all about. You know, for me, I actually enjoy the rivalry just as much as the game. The build up, being able to talk trash back and forth with the Eagle fans and Cowboy fans and stuff like that. Because there is no sport out there that's like football. And when you got great guys like Lincoln over here, when you got Sergeant Cowboy, where, where's the Sergeant at? Sarge, Sarge, Sarge. I'm sitting there laughing about all these stories. Link, I met Lincoln last year in Washington. Uh-huh. He had me laughing so hard in, in Barry's room. Uh-huh. We just had a blast with him. Hey man, I he told my Uber him. driver about you, Sergeant Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you tell him about me there, Link? What did you I tell said, him, man, Link? I met a guy. I spent three days with him, two days with him, and we're family now. I said, that's how awesome oh. him and his wife, his girl, wife, him and his wife. Girlfriend, girlfriend. Girlfriend, girl, 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 girl. Oh, yeah, don't mess that up. <laughs> you did it right. <laughs> Um, how quickly we became really good friends. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I was telling you about because I had, I had my oh lord, oh my. Hey, okay. but getting get and I'm getting the up. opportunity. Look at this. Getting the this opportunity me, as a fan. This is me and Washington. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> was that the food coma? <laughs> hey, the NFL player oh, got on the Super Bowl. Oh, hey, my God. hey, throw that, throw that phone, throw that phone away, Victor Lincoln. Right, guys, come oh. on. Now. You got to make sure he races. Oh. That's that's. Oh my uh, God, I'm with a social media guy. He got all the goods. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get that autograph for you, Sergeant Cowboy. Hey, the, the best thing, the, the best thing, that thought, the best thing that I thought Sergeant Cowboy was going to do a record deal after that with a with a cowboy. I mean, you guys were lighting it up with that. Woo! Karaoke oh. machine would have been in trouble with us, Link. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have burned a karaoke machine up, Dad. Hey, that's what we need. We we need to take a karaoke machine in the stadium. Okay. Oh, be part man. Of it this year, Mark. All right. Be part of it. I, 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 let me there write that down. Karaoke, karaoke machine. machine. Karaoke okay, so I'll talk to E2 right. Blue and make sure he's got it all oh, set up for wow. us. <laughs> we have contests for that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, this has been an incredible experience brought to us by Cowboys Experience. And um, if you guys have any interest in games, and trust me, we had a ball. The game was kind of secondary to all the other stuff that we had going on because we were actually uh, downtown D.C. at a bar having a few drinks. and, And, you know, talking to Lincoln was great for me because. Lincoln is hilarious. Lincoln is the kind of guy, like I said, you get a 12 pack of beer, and just sit down with a pile of wings and just eat, just listen to the stories because hey, you will, your stomach you'll get a will story hurt. Out of me with wings and beer, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So, you know, well, Mark, we appreciate your hospitality too. We appreciate all you did, all the work. I mean, you guys, you guys I mean, you really uh, went over and above and it was awesome. Yeah. But we'll look forward to see how we can top it this year. Mm hmm. Crew, oh, can I say something real quick? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Licky, man, the mic is I've yours. I've never been a guy who goes to games and enjoys games. That's not, I'm a TV, sit at home, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'd never do tailgate parties, okay? I mean, I'm talking about where we actually, that was my first experience. And it was the most incredible experience ever. Wow. And it didn't, you know, it wasn't, I thought, I was like, God dang, I got it. Sit out in the parking lot. <laughs> it was from this moment to that moment. Trying to get to the stadium was awesome. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Trying to get to AT&T, you got to you know, drive over somebody, you know, kill someone. It was so easy getting there because nobody wanted to see the Redskins. Except Cowboy fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so it was such an awesome experience, man. I had so much fun. Great people, mm-hmm. you know, um, that I got to hang out with in the hotel. Sergeant Cowboy, Tattoo Mark. I mean, dear Lord, man, it was, if you guys brought me in uh, like a family, I was so happy. Mike Mike and Barry invited me. I was like, oh, shit, you sure you don't want him to What's going on <laughs> You know what I mean? I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go. I have an ID. Mm, 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 mm. 